Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for joining. My name is Jordan Lederman, and I am the Director of Sales for 160 Marina Bay, a new boutique condominium building uh, directly in the heart of Las Olas in Fort Lauderdale. Welcome to another episode of Under the Palms presented by 160 Marina Bay. Today, we are talking about all things transportation and connectivity in Fort Lauderdale and the surrounding areas. To do so, we have Ben Porritt, Senior Vice President of Corporate Affairs with Brightline. So Ben, thank you very much for being here today. Thanks, Jordan. Appreciate it. Thanks for everybody for joining. Look forward to uh, the discussion. Terrific. And Ben, before we get started, I'm going to uh, tell everyone a little bit about our project, 160 Marina Bay. Uh, we are about eight minutes from your Fort Lauderdale location, uh, from the Brightline station in Fort Lauderdale. And I will tell everyone a little bit about our project, and then we'll jump right into it and talk about transportation. Great. All right. So guys, 160 Marina Bay, we are a luxurious boutique building being built in the heart of Fort Lauderdale. We are a 16 unit building with 3000 square foot units, ultra luxurious, super high tech. And we have a 14 boat slip private marina in the back of our building. We are located 1.4 miles from the heart of Fort Lauderdale Beach. And then in the other direction, we're less than a mile to everything on Las Olas. Fort Lauderdale is known as some of the most beautiful beaches in the state of Florida. We are the yachting capital of the world with more registered yachts than anywhere else in the world. It's known as the Venice of America. We have the largest international boat show in the world. So it's a boater's paradise. It is directly in the middle of the Tri-County area. We have Miami-Dade County to the south and West or Palm Beach County to the north. So we are right in the middle of the uh, Tri-County area. Uh, and it is a boater's paradise. There's, in, there's canals, there's the intracoastal. You can take your boat, you can go to the downtown area. You can go to one of the many restaurants along the intracoastal. And our location is right on Isle of Venice Drive. We're located in the far end of the aisle, so it's more private and has less traffic. We're also east facing. So your view from all of our units overlook the multi-million dollar mansion to the east, and you don't get uh, really burnt out from the west hot afternoon sun. So we're very strategically located on Isle of Venice Drive with over 240 linear feet of water frontage. And again, this is a perfect project for any buyer who can't decide between purchasing on the beach or purchasing in the city. We are the perfect blend of both. We are 1.4 miles to the heart of Fort Lauderdale Beach. And in the other direction, we're less than a mile to everything on Las Olas and about two miles away from the Brightline Station, which we'll talk about in a little bit with Ben. You can see here our location. You can take your boat right from your backyard all through the intracoastal. You can even be out in the ocean in less than 20 minutes and get to the Bimini in about an hour to two hours, depending on how fast you go. We're very centrally located. We're six miles from the Fort Lauderdale International Airport. Again, the Brightline Station is just two miles away. So we're very centrally located directly on the water. Our units will be very, very luxurious. We're gonna have a beautiful pool uh, in, the, in the back along with a bunch of lounge chairs and cabanas in the barbecue area. Our lobby will feature refrigeration locker systems, most likely by Amazon. Here you can get grocery deliveries or food delivery. You'll be notified on your phone and then you can go pick up your package or your food delivery whenever you like. Our technology in the units will be top notch from one of the five control panels that you'll have throughout the unit or through your voice or through your phone app. You can control everything from your front door locks, your lighting, your thermostat, your window shades. You can even tell your master bathroom shower head to turn on if you don't like to get into a cold shower. Our uh, units and building will be ultra luxurious, 10 foot ceilings. Our corner units will have wraparound terraces with beautiful windows, imported Italian floors, which are gonna flow through to the outside of the terrace for a continuous feel. These are large tile, um, porcelain tile floors. Every unit's gonna feature a full wet bar in the dining area. Our units are designed to feel more like a home than a condo unit. Again, almost 3000 square feet, a uh, beautiful wet bar in the area with the quartz countertop, cabinets imported direct from Italy. We have Sub-Zero wine fridge. All of the finishes throughout the unit will be matte black. This will be in the kitchen, the bathrooms and the wet bar area, just to give it that more sophisticated feel. Fort Lauderdale is a very sophisticated city, so this project really matches the lifestyle of Fort Lauderdale. Our kitchens are absolutely beautiful. They are chef-inspired U-shaped kitchens with a huge 10-foot island. Uh, two-tone cabinets imported from Italy, 
and it'll have the hidden panels for the refrigerator, the dishwasher, and all the appliances are top notch. We have Wolf, Mila, and Sub Zero appliances. Uh, in the days of working from home environment, uh, it was really important to create a luxurious spacious unit since people are spending more time inside, but we also wanted to give a lot of exterior space for people spending more time inside. So we have huge deep terraces, big enough for a, a couch and chair setup or a dining table outside. It's not your typical uh, small balcony where you can fit two chairs. And you can see just from our view how beautiful the view is gonna be. It's nice and tranquil. You're facing east over the multi-million dollar homes uh, and it's really relaxing to enjoy on your terrace. Our building is very modern in design but still keeps the elegant and sophisticated feel. We're very proud of our architect and designer uh, and the development team. Uh, everyone has been around, they're very experienced for over 40 years. Um, so it's a very amazing product uh, that we're really excited to launch. We just launched a couple of months ago and the feedback has been really amazing so far. Here's a beautiful nighttime rendering of our building. And for more information on 160 Marina Bay, you can go to 160marinabay.com. You can call our sales center at 954-939-0440 or email me directly at jordan at 160 Marina Bay. Our prices start from 2.2 million to 2.5 million for the penthouse units. We're still offering at this point our family and friends tier one pricing for another couple of weeks since we just launched. Um, and then as we sell out, uh, most likely prices will increase. Our delivery for the product is quarter two of 2022. So about 14 months away. And it is going to be the nicest, most luxurious building in the area. So we're really excited to uh, tell our audience about it today. And with that being said, we do want to talk to Ben um, about a lot of talk about a very important topic, which is transportation in particular, the Brightline system, uh, which is fairly new to Southeast Florida. So Ben, thanks again for joining us. Yeah, Jordan, thanks a lot. Look, I, I love the building uh, going through that. You know, it's first of all, congratulations on what you guys have put together. It looks incredible. Um, and I think it's exactly what we're looking for in South Florida. You know, I, I think we have a tremendous amount of growth potential, uh, but we want the right type of growth. So uh, nice work on that. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Um, so Ben, you are the VP of Corporate Affairs, at, uh, Senior VP of Corporate Affairs at Brightline. Can you tell us a little bit of a background about the Brightline and when it uh, was introduced to Southeast Florida and the reason for it? Yeah, so Brightline, for those who aren't familiar, we're the first privately funded passenger rail system in this country in more than a century. Um, and we operate today between South Florida, uh, between Miami and West Palm Beach. We're under construction to connect that to uh, all the way up to Orlando. Uh, and we have a second project that's outside the state of Florida, which will connect Las Vegas in Southern California, the LA metro region, uh, which we should be under construction by the end of this year. Our main objective and our main business model is to connect city pairs that are too short to fly and too far to drive. So really that two to 350 mile space uh, that allows us to connect city pairs for both leisure travelers and business travelers. Um, ultimately what we found is that we wanna create projects that grow jobs, uh, improve the environment and the climate and provide additional access uh, to others. So, you know, we're the first to do this. It's kind of awesome, you know, it's kind of incredible that the state of Florida uh, will be the first state fully connected by high-speed rail from a, a private side, um, you know, in all the, the United States. And so the final project that we're working on now is we're negotiating with the state of Florida to expand from Orlando International Airport uh, all the way to Tampa. And we've signed a lease agreement with um, Disney to put a station um, on our first stop to Tampa. So we got a lot of big projects taking place, all transportation systems and all designed to kind of take cars off the road and improve mobility within our cities. Terrific. Uh, before we continue, I just wanna, I forgot to mention, if you do have a question for any of the attendees, there is a chat box. Uh, at the bottom of your screen or a Q&A. So you can type in one, any of your questions for Ben or myself there and we'll try to answer them as we uh, talk about the bright line and, and at the end of the presentation. Um, ben, before you and I uh, jumped on the call, we, we were talking about how terrible uh, traffic is in Southeast Florida. Uh, 95 is always backed up. And uh, I'm assuming that was part of the reason uh, for the bright line, you know, to connect the three major counties uh, together. 
Yeah, I mean, listen, like uh, South Florida is uh, notoriously known for how bad our traffic is, how much time we spend in cars every year. We spend about 65 hours a year just idling in our cars, which we could be working out, we could be running, we could be sitting in front of the television, we could be hanging out with the people that we'd rather spend time with. So we all know it's a problem. It's an issue that all of us face. Um, the vision for Brightline really came um, from you know our founder, his name is Wes Edens. He looked at uh, Florida and looked at the growth that Florida has. I mean, we have about a thousand people moving here a day. The amount of development and density, not just in Fort Lauderdale, but in Miami, West Palm, all the way up to uh, Central Florida, is incredible. And so when you look at the type of development that we're seeing, like if you just look at Fort Lauderdale specifically, thousands and thousands of new residential units coming online, you have to ask yourself, how do all these people move around? Um, and in Miami-Dade, the same thing. We look at Brightline and we think that we do three things really well. We create transportation systems better than anybody. And that goes beyond just a train. We want our train to connect into an urban transportation network that allows people who live um, you know, at your building or others to be able to get from our station to their building quick, easy, and convenient. Um, we create uh, a better transportation experience than anybody. We recognize that to get people on trains, um, it's gotta be something unique. It can't just, it's no different than your building. To get people inside your building, you have to create something that's different that they can't get anywhere else. And if you haven't been on our train, you'll recognize uh, if you have been on our train, you'll recognize the complete difference between other forms of transportation and ours. And I think the final thing that we do really well is we create value around our station. In Miami, uh, we took a, you know, kind of often forgotten neighborhood with Overtown and helped spur a new development within this region. Over 24 new projects have broken ground or been completed since we started construction around our Miami-Dade station. Uh, we're seeing the same thing in Fort Lauderdale and West Palm Beach. So there's a tremendous amount of value because people want to be next to a transportation network that not just gets, you know, doesn't just get them between the tri-county area, but gives them an option and a quicker, more convenient option to get to Orlando and eventually Disney and Tampa. Amazing. Um, my personal experience with Brightline, I'm a huge fan. Uh, I took it, it, it shut down now, correct, for COVID? Yeah, we paused operations uh, short, you know, right around April 1st. We do expect to be back online and up and running before the end of this year. Okay, gotcha. Um, I know that was a popular question for people. The end of this year is when you expect to be up and running. Uh, my personal experience with Brightline, and I am a huge fan, it is so pleasant to ride, just spacious, uh, beautiful seats. You, it just feels ultra luxurious. Um, and when we were living in Miami, we had our um, in-laws watch um, our, our baby. And from every single day, from Fort Lauderdale to Miami, always on time. In Miami, there's a bunch of connections with the Metro Mover and, and the Metro Rail. So it, it really is an amazing form of transportation that not only connects downtown Miami to Fort Lauderdale, but once you're in downtown Miami, you can disperse and go through many forms of transportation to other places. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a transportation network that we're talking about. So a couple things on the experience. I mean, we took everything that people were familiar with, with train travel and tried to flip it on its head. So anybody who's, you know, ridden modern, you know, today's version of train, it's gray, it's dreary, frankly, it smells terrible and the service is awful. And we made an attempt to look at this through the lens of a consumer and from the lens of hospitality. Uh, our president is, has a hospitality background, came from the hotel industry. We hired through the hospitality lens. So when you walk into our station, the look, the smell, the energy, the staff, the team, um, they all are you know, looking at it through the consumer lens. Also the amenities that you get, uh, you'll never be searching and looking for a place to plug in your phone or your computer, uh, high-end beverages, high-end food selection. Uh, so we want it to be your definition of a home away from home while you travel. I think often in transportation, we've just you know been so used to picking whatever the, the cheapest option is or the most convenient option is without really giving any uh, sort of interest into the experience. We think the experience matters tremendously, especially if you're gonna be on our train for two hours, three hours, uh, depending on what part of the country you're in. Now, when you're going from Miami to, to Fort Lauderdale or in reverse, you know, the number one complaint that we get, I'm not kidding, is actually people saying the, the ride was too short. I only had a chance for one, one drink before the heat came. Um, 
so people do like the experience. I mean, it's, it's tremendously comfortable. Uh, it's, it is, it is luxurious, but the price point is accessible to, to just about anybody. Um, and I think that as, you know, as our community grows, certainly in Fort Lauderdale and beyond, more and more people are going to become single car households or no car households, or at least car optional. And this is going to be an opportunity for those folks to jump on, uh, you know, to get somewhere convenient wherever they're trying to go in South Florida. Definitely. Ben, are you guys uh, still serving booze on the uh, Brightline? As soon as we get back up and running. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, food and beverage is a, is a huge thing for us. Um, you know, there's a couple of things that I think that we envision. Um, like if you take our train in Vegas, let me tell you a little bit about that. Cause that's, that's going to be even, um, even different than what we experience here. That will go from Las Vegas to the LA Metro region, fully electric top speeds of 200 miles an hour, essentially through the desert, right down the middle of the highway. So if you're in LA and you want to go, you know, to your hotel in Las Vegas, you'll essentially check into your hotel at our station. Your bags will show up at your suite. Uh, you can hit the strip as soon as you get there. We envision things like that happening here in Florida as well, right? So whether you're going to Port Miami to cruise or Disney or Tampa, wherever your end destination is, we want to make it so convenient for you that you go to your hotel, your bags are already there. You don't even need to mess with it uh, so that you can just enjoy the ride. And if that comes with uh, returning emails or having a cocktail or both, obviously, you know, that's going to be ready for you uh, wherever you're headed. Definitely. And as part of the strategy of Brightline, because you do pick up for your stations, I mean, they're, they're right in the downtown areas, like really central hubs. Uh, Fort Lauderdale, I think you're right on Broward, and it's super easy to get there uh, to the rest of downtown Fort Lauderdale. But the, the stop coming up, Disney, which I believe is one of the top tourist destinations in the world, and we know of a lot of people in the Tri-County area make the drive to Disney, but this would be so much more convenient to take the train. When is the Dis or the Orlando um, location? When is the estimated completion date for that? So we'll complete uh, the the first journey of Orlando by 2022. Uh, so construction will be completed by the end of 2022. The Disney and Tampa line are part of a negotiation with the state of Florida. Uh, our hope is to be under construction on that by 2023, if not sooner. So that's that's the timeline for that. Um, and just just want to respond to Adriana. Just a quick. Uh, response on the onboard amenities. To me, the onboard amenities both play into kind of the post-COVID world as well as what people want and are comfortable with prior to COVID. Um, I think we did like looking at it through the lens of a consumer, um, you know, we created these environments that I think are going to be table stakes for how the post-COVID transportation world operates. Uh, touchless environments, cashless environments, touchless hygienes. Um, you know, our, our president, you know, repeated this refrain all the time. And it kind of sounds funny, but he was like, listen, anybody who goes into our restroom, that is going to be, that's going to be, you know, the defining moment of whether they come back or not. And so, you know, our bathroom actually won an award for the, the best bathroom in South Florida. Um, the amenities from a consumer business person, you know, you, you have comfortable seats, spacious seats, uh, plugins everywhere. Uh, you have uh, quiet cars. You can take your phone calls um, in between each of the uh, coaches. Um, so all of these, I think, play into the type of post-COVID transportation world that people are going to expect. A couple other things is we have already had reserved seating. We've already had uh, you know uh, barriers between most of the rows of seats, and we had air filtration systems um, that people are now putting in transportation. We already had that. Uh, prior to COVID, but we'll continue to look at, at ways to improve it. Um, but, you know, the, you know, end to end Wi-Fi, the second you walk into our station to the second you leave, um, you'll never lose Wi-Fi, whether you're on your phone or your computer. And so all of these things we know that we can't live without. Um, and so we obviously wanted to make sure that our guests uh, didn't have to live without it once they got on our trains. Great. We've noticed um, from a sales perspective at our project, a ton, this mass migration down to Florida uh, from out of staters, especially the Northeast and New Yorkers where they are very familiar and they use public transportation um, and you know trains and, and things a lot. So actually part of our presentation and when we're explaining Fort Lauderdale, one of our main things that we do talk about is the Bright Line. Um, how have you guys been planning um, when you reopen for this mass migration, especially for the Northeasterners and the New Yorkers that are used to 
uh, commuter trains and, and trains like this. Have you, do you guys have any plans in place to kind of target these people? Yeah, two things. So one, um, we're actively working with a lot of the economic development folks um, in all three counties, whether that's the Fort Lauderdale Alliance or um, you know the Miami-Dade Beacon Council, as they actively recruit folks from California, Chicago, uh, and the New York, New Jersey area, they're using us to help recruit them. We're either meeting with those candidates or providing up-to-date information on our system because what we've determined and what we've seen is that these folks just don't want to move into South Florida for any particular reason. They want the connectivity that they're used to in New York. Uh, so Blackstone, for instance, which just moved into uh, Miami-Dade, they actually acquired the buildings that are, one is on top of our station. And the primary reason in which they did that was they wanted to have connectivity for their employees. You're also talking about uh, people who are moving from areas that don't mind a 30 or 60 minute commute. So the idea of living in Palm Beach and commuting uh, to Miami or Fort Lauderdale to Miami isn't that daunting compared to what we're used to having lived in South Florida. Um, other than that, like we're 100% we're targeting all those folks who are moving down. Um, and we've been doing that in unique ways since we, oper since we began operations in 2018. A lot of it is uh, advertising to snowbirds who are just down here for a period of time to get them used to the transportation system. Um, and then as, as people settle in, you know, they're gonna obviously see all of our digital efforts and our uh, out of home efforts. Um, but we certainly want to make sure that people are aware of the connectivity op opportunities that we provide. Um, and so part of it is, is doing events like these and elsewhere where we're telling our story for the first time, even though, you know, you know, we've told it a million times. Yeah. What you just mentioned is totally spot on um, from what we've been seeing with, with our buyers. And, you know, a lot of companies are moving to Fort Lauderdale, but a lot of companies are also moving to, you know, Palm Beach County and Miami-Dade. So a lot of our buyers or people interested in the project has, have told us, oh yeah, I'm gonna be working in Miami or uh, West Palm Beach, um, but we wanna live in Fort Lauderdale because the Bright Line is gonna make it so easy for us to commute back and forth uh, daily, you know, once we go back into the office. So, um, so we've been seeing that on our end a lot too, exactly what you said. Yeah, I mean, and uh, we talked about this a lot. I, I was at a developer's conference yesterday in Fort Lauderdale um, and you know, there's, there's a mutual a mutually beneficial relationship between developers and Brightline. You know, uh, they see the value in, in connecting to our system and we obviously need the people who are living in dense areas that are close to our stations. Um, so we, we, we see this, just one question, you know, kind of in relation to this and in response to, to Lisa Whitaker is, uh, we've seen tremendous amount of growth on our train. So prior to shutting down uh, and pausing operations, our first year, we started operations in January of 2018 between West Palm and Fort Lauderdale, added Miami in May of that year. So in our first uh, year of operations, um, we had you know well over a half a million rides. I think it was close to 700,000, which was more than the first calendar year of Excella in the Northeast Corridor. So you know, serving New York, Philadelphia, DC area, we had more riders than that in our first calendar year. In our first full year, which was 2019, where we had the full system operating in South Florida, uh, we had over a million riders. And prior to COVID shutting down, we were hitting records each month on our way to doubling that number and getting uh, to 2 million. So there's no question that people were getting out of their car, uh, whether they're curiosity seekers or not. But once people tried it, what we recognized and what we saw is that they saw the value and how it could impact their everyday life and they wanted to keep, keep aboard the train. So we did see the numbers improving every day and, and you know, we're excited to get back to, to launching operations this year. Perfect. And you guys do offer from, from what I remember, a you know, daily one-time fee or a monthly routine uh, pass for, for your customers. Yep, we do uh, a variety of corporate packs, um, you know, individual packs and passes. I think that we'll, you know, probably release kind of a new suite of products as, as we get closer to launching. Uh, we're kind of experimenting and, and doing some, you know, polls and trying to, you know, solicit feedback from folks on what type of products would help them the most. Uh, because we do know that people's lives have changed and whether they're going to work three days a week or five days a week, uh, that's going to come into to a factor. So I think that there's different products that we'll offer, but there's always going to be something that gives people um, you know, whatever works for them and kind of their lifestyle. Terrific. 
Uh, I have to ask, um, I don't know how much info you're going to be able to reveal, but there's a lot of talk in the news about Brightline in discussions with Elon Musk's boring company. Uh, do you mind shedding a little bit of light on that? Yeah, listen, I think it's exciting. I think, you know, there's, there's, I think that there, the thing with transportation is you see things that are operational today, right? Like trains and golf carts and all these things, scooters and all these things that connect people. But you have to have a second set of people in the industry that are looking about what's ahead 10, 20, 30 years from now. Um, and Elon Musk is, is incredible at that. I mean, I think that the ideas that he's bringing to the table and others, there is, a, there is a conversation to be had around that. We obviously want to have a seat at the table as those conversations exist. In Fort Lauderdale, as we negotiate a commuter system with Broward County, which would have um, you know, shorter distances between tracks and be separate from our Brightline Express train to Orlando. Um, they are, the city of Fort Lauderdale is, is kind of in discussions with the boring company and Elon Musk about uh, tunnel systems throughout the city of Fort Lauderdale. They've presented three different tunnel systems um, for the boring company to look at. One would be over the new river, uh, which would uh, create an underground tunnel around Broward Boulevard. Uh, yet to determine if that's even possible or not. But the one that's really interesting to both us, the Boring Company and the city of Fort Lauderdale is the potential for a underground tunnel station from our station area in Fort Lauderdale to the beach under Los Olas, uh, which would be an incredible opportunity for first and last mile transitions and getting people to the beach who are just visiting there or people who live in your building. So I think that there's, um, I think it could be really cool. Now, people ask, is that really possible? Uh, the Boring Company today has a system that they have built around the Las Vegas Convention Center that is a tunnel that just goes right around the convention center. And uh, they put Teslas in there. So basically, you walk downstairs, you get in a Tesla, and you go around that tunnel system. That's what they're envisioning here. I think that there's a real possibility something like that happens. Uh, got a long way to go, but certainly you know, exploring that as a potential uh, for, for Fort Lauderdale, which, I mean, it'd be incredible. It'd be, it'd be a slam dunk. Yeah. Yeah. That would be really, really nice. Um, and I know Brightline has a lot of plans for, are they called commuter stations or stops in other areas besides Miami, Fort Lauderdale, West Palm and Orlando? Yeah. So this would be a separate system. So we've negotiated uh, a deal with Miami-Dade County and are in negotiations to expand that into Broward County that would uh, put together a commuter system somewhat similar to TriRail on our tracks. TriRail today operates uh, about three miles west of the Brightline system. And so between Miami-Dade and Broward, there would be, let's say 14 stations. It, the train service would be totally different. You know, It would stop every one, two or four miles depending on where these stations end up being. And that would operate alongside the Brightline system that we have today. So Brightline would continue to get you express from city to city, uh, but, this station, uh, but this commuter system that's being planned and negotiated would get you through uh, more of the urban core and the downtown economic centers um, that may, many of us have to commute to. So it would give you way more of an opportunity to go car free. Great. And the... Brightline, how does it impact business growth in, in South Florida, especially the Tri-County area? I know you talked a little bit about Blackstone um, um, acquiring or partnering up with the property station in Miami, but how else has Brightline helped with businesses that are, especially businesses that are, businesses that are moving down to Southeast Florida? Um, yeah, I mean, whether it's the, you know, the previous Amazon headquarters uh, that they were trying to recruit for, like, we're a big piece of that. Um, but I think, I think the thing that is, is maybe the most obvious is the amount of development around our station. That didn't happen by accident. People recognize that a transportation system is a huge amenity for either commercial real estate or residential properties to be able to sell to people and tenants. Um, and so, you know, from a business standpoint, if you look just in Miami, the Miami uh, World Center is right next to our building. That is being planned um, and designed because the, the, I mean, it's been there for a long, it's been discussed for a long time, but it's being moved forward because of the opportunity with the transportation network. Uh, so I think that just with, with the impact that we've seen with business is really the impact that we've seen with development. And it's giving people something new to think about as to where to place uh, commercial and residential properties, as well as where companies can headquarter 
uh, because they can get their employees to and from wherever they may want to live. It expands your network, so to speak. Definitely. Yeah. And I know the station, you know, in downtown Fort Lauderdale is, is it's a great location and you guys are close to this new district called Fett Village and, and Mass. And those are really up and coming areas with a lot of future development planned. Um, so you really um, do a great job. Um, kudos for that on picking your locations for your stations. I think that's really a huge benefit to the Bright Line. Yeah, they, and, and I think, you know, that station is going to be the most unique over the next 10 years because you have a tremendous amount of development planning around that station, both on, both on the east side and the west side, that I think is going to create kind of a new gateway, new downtown center for Fort Lauderdale to, you know, will get people, will allow people to, you know, walk around safely, pedestrian friendly, uh, but also have, you know, unique design buildings that we'll all be proud of that will kind of, you know, match our skyline. Definitely. And what's the average time from Miami to Fort Lauderdale? 27 minutes. 27 minutes. And we're about eight minutes from the Bright Line. So that basically means in 35 minutes, our residents can go from their front door to downtown Miami for a heat game drink some beers or have some martinis on the train and uh, have a wonderful night out. I'll give you two quick things, you know, before we wrap it up. So one on the heat game, we created a partnership with the Miami heat. So we always have a train that leaves 30 minutes after the game ends. So you never have to decide um, if you want to leave before the game ends or not. You can see, you know, the final, the final shot, if you will. Um, but I live in downtown Fort Lauderdale. And many of our teammates live, you know, around the city of Miami. Um, I would consistently beat them into the office, which is in Overtown. So I would take a six minute Uber ride, a 27 minute train ride, and would be able to be into the office in Miami before then. That's the convenience of a system like this. And I think that that's what, you know, people want is reliability and the ability to kind of work as they're riding. Um, it's just, it's just a good feeling. Gets you yeah. stepped in. Yeah, I was going to say you, you probably beat them even further because you can do work on the Bright Line with the Wi-Fi and, and the tables and, and just... Right, everything. you don't have to worry about driving. You can sit there. You don't have to, it, Sometimes you don't even know where you are. You're not even paying attention. You're just staring at your screen. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge fan. Uh, ben, I want to thank you uh, very much for your time. How can our audience uh, get more info on the Bright Line if they want to do more research or hear more about what's, what's coming up? Yeah, I mean, obviously, our all of our uh, social channels and our, our our website are at GoBrightline or GoBrightline.com. Uh, so check us out. We'll have regular updates on the project, both uh, to Orlando and our reopening dates here in South Florida. So pay attention to that. And then, you know, this is going to be a unique year with uh, high-speed rail kind of being a huge topic of conversation nationally. And I think you're going to you know, see that Brightline is going to be front and center on that, which is pretty exciting for South Florida. So pay attention and I appreciate it. You know, if, if we can present to anybody else's companies or, or if you have any additional information, you can always email me at ben at gobrightline.com. Terrific. Well, Ben, thank you so much. Uh, you guys heard it at gobrightline or gobrightline.com. Um, ben, thank you very much for your time. If you want more information on 160 Marina Bay, the website is 160marinabay.com, or you can call our sales center at 954-939-0440. I want to thank everybody for joining, and we really appreciate it. Ben, thanks again for your time. All right. Thanks, Jordan. Take care, man. Take care.